Hello, hello, everybody. See some people joining. We're going to be uh, giving it a few minutes here to let everybody get in the room and then we'll, we'll get started here. Hope everybody's been enjoying the event, uh, the Collagix Cloud Intelligence event so far uh, and looking forward to the, the breakout sessions here. Okay, everybody, we'll give it about 30 more seconds. Just let all the final uh, participants enter the room and then we will get started. So stay tuned. All right, let's 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 kick it off then. Um, so welcome everybody to the uh, breakout Intel session of the Cologix Cloud Intelligence event. Uh, my name is Reed Baker. I am a general manager for supporting our strategic carrier relationships, um, as well as several US uh, central markets of, of the Cologix platform. Uh, today's topic uh, is dedicated to the 5G revolution. Um, and the questions that we'll be asking is, how will this technology change connectivity from a consumer to an enterprise to a provider level? Um, and to help shed light on this, I wanted to welcome our esteemed guest, uh, Dewan Young, Director of Platforms and Applications at Verizon Partner Solutions. Hi, Dewan, how are you? Hello, hey, Reed. how are you? <laughs> Doing great. Thank you so much for, for making the time today to connect with um, um, our customers, our partners, and, and Cologix employees. So um, can't thank you enough. Uh, and, 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 and talking today about a topic that is very much top of mind for, for so many of us. So first of all, I guess, can you tell us a little bit about yourself and what your team supports at, at Verizon Partner Solutions? Sure. Thanks, Reed. Uh, so I'm part of Verizon Partner Solutions. Uh, we are uh, formerly known as uh, the global wholesale arm. So we work with the carriers, MSOs, wireless providers, integrators globally. So roughly about 2,100, 2,000 plus customers around the globe. And our, our focus is on any partner that can leverage the various assets within Verizon to grow both their top line revenue as well as Verizon's top line revenue by strategic partnerships, alliances. Uh, we form those and work, work together in order to grow that up, so grow grow that out for our partners. So that's our focus. And um, I personally sit within our marketing arm. Um, so looking at the uh, platforms and various platforms and application solutions um, that we can provide uh, that our partners can leverage in order to bring the market. Great, fantastic. Well. Uh, thanks for that overview, and and let's just get right into um, some questions that I had. Um, at which point we will also, uh, uh, towards the end of the of the session, open it up to Q and A from from the audience. So, uh, all you listeners out there, um, you know, feel free to uh, be prepared to ask questions uh, towards the end here. So, 
So let, let's just start high level, 50,000 foot overview. Um, you know, where is Verizon from a, a 5G perspective? Sure. So before we jumped on this panel, I had no idea of the news that we were going to be releasing today uh, from a Verizon perspective, but it's been an exciting day in the news, one in which our CEO, Hans Vesper, termed one of the biggest days in Verizon history. Uh, so uh, we announced today uh, the purchase of a C band uh, spectrum wow. to add on to our millimeter wave spectrum. Um, so it's a $53 billion purchase of Spectrum. Um, and we are extremely excited of not only about the purchase, but also what that means for our customers. Um, so over the next 12 months, we'll be able to provide 5G service to over 100 million customers across the nation. Uh, we'll be in over 46 markets. So the proliferation of 5G, um, we always talk about the, our coverage in the marketplace on that red map with all the, the, the dots that we have currently from a 4G perspective, we're looking at the proliferation of 5G uh, in the same way. So by 2024, we hope to be at over 200 million uh, customers served with 5G and still growing with exciting new solutions that we, we plan to bring to the marketplace. So I, I'll echo my uh, uh, CEO's sentiments uh, today on CNBC and, and, uh, and other venues. Um, that it's an exciting day for Verizon and, and where we're at from a 5G perspective. Yeah, that's it. That's incredible. Uh, you know, and, and already, you know, you, whether you have Verizon Super Bowl ads uh, combined with uh, the news of today, you all are uh, obviously um, here and in the for, forefront of the, the 5G uh, proliferation. So that's fantastic news and congratulations. Thank you. So uh, how, how, is, how is Verizon, I mean, aside from M&A activity, obviously, but um, from, a, from a, a physical investment perspective, how is Verizon investing in infrastructure to transform your network, whether it's from towers to, to fiber to equipment in a data center, et cetera? Can you, can you elaborate on that? Yeah, absolutely, Reed. So this has been... Uh a five-year journey that we've been on in remaking our, our network uh, from our core network to all the way out to the, the cell sites, as you mentioned. And 5G brings an added layer of changing out antennas and retrofitting what we've done from a, a 4G uh, densification perspective uh, to retrofit that and, and refresh that for 5G. But we started the process of bringing things like SDN and NFV uh, into the core of our network um, and bringing more software into what we did at the core uh, for the last five years in preparation for what we were going to see uh, for, uh, uh, from 5G. So creating our intelligent edge network, uh, overhauling our, our, our core network, and preparing to, you know, to, uh, for solutions that are in sync with the, the software-based world that we find ourselves in has been a, a key component for us. As we look at partners from a data center perspective, you know, proliferating out, changing out some of our network elements for the changes that I just mentioned has been a critical component, as I mentioned, for the last several years. So we'll continue to look at how we proliferate 5G, how do we bring more sites on, how do we bring more locations on, and that will have an impact on how, how we've, we've built our network overall. Great, and, and that brings uh, a question to my mind, you know, definitely for the Cologics platform, you know, a big focus of ours is, is the edge. Um, so, so how do, how do you and Verizon define uh, particularly edge computing and, and, and what does that mean for 5G? That's a good question. So if you ask uh, 10 people how they define edge, you probably get uh, nine different definitions of edge. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to date myself, Reed. I, you know, I, I remember selling and installing in the day uh, where customer, when you went out to a customer prem, there was this thing called a, a server closet uh, at the customer prem where they had a closet full of where all of their servers are. And so uh, moving back full circle, whether you define the edge uh, at the, the cell tower, at the uh, service access point for the, the, the telco, or at the customer prem, it seems like it, it's moved full circle where we've, we've move, moved out. The edge is moving from the centralized computing, centralized uh, cloud service providers 
to closer to the customer prem in various iterations. So there's a lot of definitions and it's come full circle. You know, edge computing is a lot sexier name than uh, uh, a server closet. So, <laughs> so I think they got it right, but I think everything comes full circle. And the biggest thing is that uh, with the, the prol proliferation of new applications and B2B applications uh, specifically, uh, getting low latency, closer to where that resides is going to be a critical component um so that that varies to a certain certain degree that's that's a great answer and 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 you know you when you're talking about low latency applications to from a b2b perspective uh you know the question i would follow up with that is you know from an enterprise perspective what does all of this mean how can enterprises truly leverage this technology to further their objectives Sure, sure. So uh, we have this conversation uh, quite a bit with our enterprise customers. So VPS is part of Verizon, uh, the Verizon Business Group, uh, which our mission is to really focus and deliver on the networks of the future uh, for businesses across the, across the globe. Um, so one of the conversations that we continually have with enterprises is if you're not looking at how to disrupt your business, then there's a high probability that you're going to get disrupted. Um, so uh, digital transformation is at the forefront. And so for enterprises that they really need to be looking at their experiences that the customers have when they interact with them and how you could potentially change that in a new digital world. Um, what are the business processes on the back end where you can gain more efficiencies? And there's a slew of uh, you know buzzword bingo around all of the technologies associated with that. But at the core of it is how are you doing business? How are you interacting with your customers? And how can you transform your internal processes um, to use you know digital transformation in order to make that happen? So at the core of enterprises, we have that conversation, and then layer on that. Okay, now that we understand your mission and what you're trying to accomplish, what are the technologies? So we talked about low latency applications specifically from a B2B perspective. Uh, but, you know, we all know coming from the, the co-location and the cloud intelligence space that, you know, uh, portability and the movement of, of core mission critical applications is more than a notion, right? So, um, you know, you're always gonna have, you know, mission critical applications at, at one location, but providing portability, interoperability across the, the, your, your nodes uh, and really figuring out how uh, a business wants to operate is a critical piece. You asked the question, Reed, about uh, edge computing, and I mentioned the server cl uh, closet. Well, years ago, I, I say years ago, that's how long the pandemic has been, Reed. <laughs> far, <laughs> far, far, far ago. <laughs> far, far ago. Uh, but before the pandemic, we all went into an office, uh, we went into a location, and the applications for that business were in usually you know, centered around having your employees in that office. But now we live in this uh, remote working environment and more and more so you're seeing, you know, uh, a need for distributed computing because employees, just like we're on a video conference uh, today, people are all over and they're not in a centralized location. So what does that mean for edge computing? What does that mean for things like new technologies like SASE and protecting those endpoints? Um, so there's a, a lot that I think enterprises have to take into mind. It's how do I bring about digital transformation so I don't get disrupted as a business? And then secondly, this new environment, how, how has the remote working, remote learning and remote everything um, of the last year, it feels like years, uh, the last year changed the way that I do business? And what do I look like in this new normal going forward as offices begin to, to open? Uh, reopen and potentially bring bring folks in. So I think there's it's there's no better time uh, to be in technologies. It's an exciting time to be in technologies, but there's a ton of questions that businesses and enterprise are asking themselves. And we as technology providers get the uh, huge honor and privilege to provide some solutions for them. Fantastic. Well, we're we're running short on time. I wish I could. Uh, we could. We could do this for a whole hour. I guess the, the last question I have before we open it up to the audience is, um, how is Verizon using 5G as an opportunity to partner with the public cloud providers? Um, and assuming you are doing that, since I, I know you are doing that, how? 
Sure. So um, as we talked, um, you know, we divested our, our cloud assets a few years back. And Verizon has really leaned into partnership over the last few years, We're leaned into collaboration. Uh, we have significant partnerships with the, some of the largest companies in the world. But from a MEC perspective, what we've done is on the for 5G public MEC, uh, we've partnered with AWS uh, with a solution, AWS Wavelength. Um, and basically what we've done is we've uh, placed an AWS stack in the Verizon service access points. So you have the best of Amazon, you have 5G connectivity, close to you know, the edge as we defined it before. Um, so low latency applications. So we're partnering with AWS in the public Mac, 5G public Mac space. And then on the private Mac space where businesses are looking um, to evolve from the server closet to full uh, Mac uh, solutions at the customer prem. We're partnering with uh, Azure, and we're we're placing a Azure uh, stacks at the customer prem, um, coordinating that with 5G, private 5G, and solutions like that. So, you know, public uh, partnership, public cloud partnership with AWS, private cloud partnership with Azure, and I could for I can uh, guess that more and more partnerships uh, that can leverage both of our assets, as I mentioned at the top of the call. Um, you know, we're always looking at strategic partnerships and alliances that we can put, you know, one and one and make three um, and provide solutions for our customers that um, get them closer to their strategic objectives. Awesome. Great, great. Dwan, uh, thank you so much. Um, you know, with uh, with the, the little time that we have left, I also wanted to make sure that that uh, our audience had a chance to ask any questions that they had. Um, so with that, um, I believe the best way is to ask in the Q&A chat, um, although maybe we can unmute, I'm not sure. Looks like we have chat. Um, so I've, we have a question, um, how far past your top three competitors in updating fiber and towers to get to 5G? I think we, we answered something along those lines uh, uh, earlier um, with, the, with the infrastructure. Um, yeah, that, that was not a planned question, by the way, for the audience. <laughs> no. <laughs> I, I, I do think that uh, the, the, the today's purchase uh, really accelerates what we wanna do from a 5G perspective. You know, our competitors to the question, they have a strategy, um, both of them, you know, in the domestic U.S. space, uh, and they're, they're executing on that. We feel confident about what we've done from a network performance and what we're building out uh, from a network perspective, performance perspective, and where we can go to provide solutions to our customers uh, uh, within, with 5G and MAC solutions coming to, coming to the marketplace. Uh, and then there's one last question I see. Was there, uh, did you test in any particular market uh, as kind of your initial rollout? How did you decide that? And what were the results? Sure. So we have, like I said, uh, you know, this year we'll be in 46 different markets with 5G solutions. Um, various solutions, you know, we are, we, we tested the first public MEC solution in Chicago uh, with AWS. That was the first uh, with a plan to, to, to grow that to 10 uh, cloud nodes uh, with our, our AWS partnership. That would be the same um, scenario with basic 5G solutions. But our, our key is, as I mentioned, how do we get to that mass proliferation of 5G across the United States? Um, but we, we've, over the years, we look at it city by city and, and some cities have come on the map a little faster than others, but eventually we'll get there just like we did with 4G. Awesome. Well, uh, that brings us about to time uh, for this session. Uh, Duan, I can't thank you enough. Um, and couldn't thank you more for being here today. And, and, and I personally found your insights hugely valuable uh, and look forward to watching the ongoing evolution of, of the Verizon platform, uh, the 5G rollout into you know, all our lives who, um, from an edge and, and, and core market perspective as well. So thank you again so much. Yeah, it was a pleasure and good luck with snowmageddon <laughs> yeah for for those of you um uh we were talking before there's a, a large
multi-foot snowstorm heading uh, to, to the Colorado region this weekend. So we're, we're preparing to batten down the hatches. But um, with that, I also wanted to thank our audience, um, again, on behalf of Cologic for attending the Cloud Intelligence event, um, as well as specifically this 5G breakout session. Um, we have a few minutes before our fireside chat uh, with Cologic CEO, Bill Fathers, uh, Google Cloud's Jan Bing Lee and Adam Berlue. Uh, you can tune into the session via the Hub platform uh, central uh, homepage. Uh, and with that, uh, it starts at 2.30. So we have a couple, couple minutes here to catch our breath. And with that, I just wanted to say thank you again, Dewan. Thank you to our audience. And we'll see everybody here shortly.